do you remember when Andrew Dobson was good? I don't, and I've known him for six years. Maybe it's because when he got out of college, all of his artistic drive completely evaporated, but maybe it's because he's lazy and he doesn't listen. And that's the moral of today's story. You can all go on home. Oh, oh, this is still like ten minutes. Okay, well, you might remember that a few days ago I posted up a song about Andrew Tracy. Now, far be it from me to condemn anybody who traces who is under the age of 13, so that's just how you do some things. But uh, for a 30-year-old man, it's pretty hilarious. What I didn't expect was the backlash, the hug boxing, and the general attitude of holier than thou. Yes, Andrew displayed that he could do what he should have done in the first place by actually referencing it on paper and not tracing it, but at least in my eyes, there is literally no evidence that he didn't trace it. And to Tom, it might seem like the point I wanted was that he could do it. Which is crazy, because I know that he can do it. I just think he's fucking lazy! So after taking my stuff down, because let's face it, I wanted to see where niceness would go, he then proceeds to bitch about copyright law as if he hasn't got copyright law completely wrong. Here's a thought, the guys editing your comics aren't actually doing anything other than editing them and then slapping them on places like Something Awful and Tumblr anonymously. I'm gonna spell this out really slow so that you can understand. You listening? You are taking a Creative Commons licensed picture, referencing or tracing it, and then putting it in a picture to then sell for money despite giving no credit to the original photographer. No, I don't care that you've done it now. Just like referencing Big Ben on paper, you didn't do it until prompted. The emphasis here is selling for money. Under the Creative Commons license on the picture of Big Ben, you also have to distribute your picture under the same attribution share alike license, which means, if I'm correct, that the high resolution image must be public domain, which makes seeing how much Big Ben is alike to the original pretty easy. But I mean, you could have just been not lazy and saved yourself a whole lot of trouble. The point is that you didn't. You didn't reference a picture on paper, put it into your artwork, and then correctly attribute the photographer upon release. You didn't stick with your original drawing of Big Ben, which is absolutely fine and was stylized to the rest of the picture. You didn't also do this for the TARDIS, which I could probably bring up, but the point is that it's pretty easy to focus on Big Ben because it sticks out like a sore thumb! So what? Big deal! Andrew Thompson doesn't understand the law! Who does? Well, a 30-year-old man who wants to make money off his art probably should. Do you guys get it yet? The reason Dobson's comics are shitty, the reason he's declined since his college days, the reason he goes to his fans for comfort and support, despite being a 30-year-old man who really should be independent as fuck at this point in his life and shouldn't need 13-year-olds to validate copyright infringement, it's because he's lazy. He doesn't learn shit, and he doesn't try his best. I could forgive him for absolutely everything else, even if he was a, a terrible artist, as long as he tried his best. But he doesn't. Andrew's admitted to being completely complacent because improving your technical ability is fucking stupid. Despite most of Andrew's technical ability probably coming from his college years. Hell, there's even comics where he references the fact that he's been taught these things and that six years down the line, he's not putting them into practice. And guess what? It shows. Cherry pick your art or you like, Dobson. I've looked at enough hands of yours over the past six years to know that you've completely forgotten how to draw them since you were in college. And yet, you pass this eternal wisdom to your fan base like it's the truth. Don't improve your technical ability because you'll just do it subconsciously. Be an ideas guy because that has always worked out for everyone. Fuck you, Dobson. When the popularity of your comics die down and when the people eventually get bored of you just being a really shitty artist and stop making things like this and, and redline comics and stop giving you advice on how not to break the law and how to improve your craft, when all of these things you've worked on over the past 14 years, like Galaxy Pirate, don't take off because you bastardized them beyond all comprehension, when Benarental Floss eventually ends, and when Sayak eventually ends, and when you admit that you're completely fine being a mediocre and complacent artist, you will be back at square one when your peers 
are at square 20. And that is going to make you look like a washed up hack. And your advice to these aspiring artists who look up to you is going to create a generation of washed up hacks. So thanks for that. No competition for me. Despite your probable notion that no publicity is bad publicity, the people who are attracted to your comics because it is a source of hilarity over your culpable actions, opinions, and mistakes are not going to buy your comic books, nor buy generate ad book. revenue. They're buy probably not even book. viewing it on your buy site. Having a 12 to 15 year old demographic does not mean that your opinions are highly viewed by the masses. Fuck it, it really doesn't. It means that they don't know any better and they look up to you. So telling them that you should never concentrate on improving your technical ability or put it second best is farcical and a highly destructive thought in a young mind. Now, don't get me wrong, there are many artists and comics out there worse than Tom Preston's collection of festering ten-year-old ideas that are completely out of touch. And, and don't get me wrong, I, I actually really do think Dobson has some form of artistic talent, especially when his old animations were really decent. And it begs the question of, Oh, I pick on Tom in the first place, it's just be me, you can pick on anyone, why would you pick a boy on Tom? And the answer is astoundingly simple. Tom encompasses all of the things wrong with multiple comics and comic book artists and artists in one fell swoop. If you make a point about Tom Preston, you're probably also making a point about Least I Could Do, Moon Over June, or any comic under the Fresh Epics banner. No more so than Scandinavia and the World, which, uh, bearing in mind this is written by a woman, features a comic where the punchline is rape. But because it's a shitty Italia ripoff, nobody seems to bring it up. If you want to make the others targets too, fair game. This is the internet. Prepare to get your shit kicked in if you somehow think that for a second you are immune to criticism, which Dobson obviously has believed for some time now. And there's so much more I could say on Andrew Dobson. How Danny and Spot was terrible, how most of his fresh and original ideas were either copies of things <coughs> on piece that are infinitely more popular because he has dollar signs in his eyes when he thought them up. How he inserts lesbianism into everything despite it being completely wrong and polarizing and offensive. But here is the real kicker. Andrew Dobson has claimed that MCAD had the worst animation department ever and that his degree is useless. Not a year before he left with his BFA in 2004, Andrew Chesworth entered the MCAD animation department in 2003 as a student. Granted, Andrew Chesworth's old animations were probably on the same level as Dobson's. And where has this useless degree and terrible animation department got him? Disney! Where you wanted to be, Dobson! And you only have yourself to blame! And that's why we hate you. In fact, in the past day or so, there has been an entirely new Tumblr made for you which hates you and has incredible insight into your mentality and failings, Mr. Dobson. This Tumblr is called whypeoplehatetompreston.tumblr.com. It is absolutely essential that you take all the information that you can get from this blog as it may just help you tenfold in your growth as an artist. But fuck this! This rant is gonna flop as hard as Formera. Might as well just gripe about things you fucked up in a vain attempt that you fix them someday. Try to remember, Dobson. Think hard. Do you remember back in the day when Alex actually looked kinda like a dude, making the comments about her looking like a dude sort of appropriate and not bizarre because she now has quite visible breasts? Do you remember when people didn't line up the characters in Alexi Pirate and automatically assume that Peggy was the captain of the ship because of Alex's design change and also because Peggy resembles the most stereotypical traits of a pirate captain. Do you remember when Alexi Pirate actually had a story and wasn't Garfield but with wacky pirates doing wacky things? Okay, I don't, I don't actually think that ever happened. Uh, Remember when you said you wanted to tell interesting story- Oh, wait, that didn't happen either. Remember putting time and effort into things that weren't just fan art or commissions? Do you remember when your power went out and you made a comic that was more visually enticing because of your limitations? Remember when you didn't make a tutorial on how to use the paint bucket in Photoshop? Remember when you didn't write every single female to be stronger and wittier than their male counterparts? 
Remember when you wrote antagonists that weren't just rambling idiots? Remember when you wrote most major male roles as something other than downtrodden but has big aspirations? And do you remember when you drew characters who were blonde? Because you didn't have an irrational hatred of blonde hair because you sort of think that people might think your characters are dumb for having blonde hair? Which is actually just as contradictory as putting them in anyways. But more likely you just hate people with blonde hair in the first place because of your completely wrong views on the old Nintendo cartoons that didn't reflect the Japanese counterparts or views of the designers since even Zelda 2 where the only reason the hair differentiates in the games is because of the limitations of the consoles yet all of the promotional art shows them as blonde of course you don't remember and this is where it's got you this is what people think of you 